All right, Nicholas okay. Kenny is a professor of history at Simon Fraser University uh, in Canada and British Columbia. Um, professor, first of all, you know, welcome. And can you give me an idea? How is this playing out in Canada? As we speak, the first mourners are being allowed now to go and publicly view the, the casket of the Queen. I mean, they are very dark times nationally here. Yeah, I mean, here in Canada, there's obviously been quite a um, surprising, I would say, outpouring of, of of emotion, I think. I mean, the Queen was was 96. Uh, I, it, it, it didn't come as any great surprise that, that she would pass away. But what uh, I think nonetheless struck a lot of people is, is I, th I think they were kind of surprised by their own uh, emotional response to it. Um, now, uh, just yesterday, the federal government announced that, that the day of the funeral next Monday would be a national holiday and uh, several provinces uh, followed suit, including uh, here in British Columbia, where, where I live, uh, meaning um, uh, the schools will be closed and, and well, provincial employees will, will have the day off. Uh, it doesn't quite extend to the to the private sector. But uh, no, we're hearing all kinds of uh, reminiscences about the Queen and, and, and of course, the reflection of, of, of what she represents to Canada and, and more broadly what, what the monarchy represents for Canada. Well, I mean, can we talk about that? Uh, b because I'm a bit confused historically in that the, the government of Pierre Elliott Trudeau uh, brought home the Constitution. Uh, where are we? 40 years ago, right? Yeah. And exactly. uh, essentially severing the constitutional tie to the monarchy. Now, did I go too far and say severing? A little bit, because in a sense, uh, although that repatriation or patriation of, of the Constitution was sort of the uh, kind of final step in the, in the full uh, independence of Canada as a, as a sovereign uh, nation. Uh, we kept, nevertheless, an in, uh, an important symbolic role in the sense that we we maintained the queen as the head of state for 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 the country, the head of state who who, who purely a figurehead. This purely a symbolic uh, role. Um, and it never ever went beyond that. The, the, the a lot of people say, well, in f the the de facto head of state is actually the governor general, and then you know within the provinces we have the lieutenant governors, and these are the people who are responsible for giving royal assent to laws that are passed. They 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 do uh, ceremonial uh, tasks such as reading the speech from the from the throne at the beginning of a new you know, legislative session, these kinds of things. Uh, right. But these As are, the these are largely in parliament. She would, it, the queen would do the right. speech from the throne. There in Canada, you had the governor general who, uh, I mean, he would also dissolve parliament when the parties came to him um, and had the power to appoint a, a party to form a government as well. That's correct, but only under the advice, according to the phrase, of the prime minister. And very, very rarely uh, in history uh, did a governor general ever uh, take take a decision independently from what the prime minister was was recommending. So um, it's it, but it but it exists as a, a protective uh, measure in case you do have a prime minister who who goes off the rails or or something like this. And we 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 saw it come close. Well, in 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 the in the kind of in the 1920s, but you know when Canada was still more uh, attached colonially to to the UK, we had. Uh, Lord Bing, the, the Governor General, who refused to act on the advice of, of Mackenzie King. Uh, that's kind of ancient history, uh, as it were. More recently, Mikhail Jean, who was who was Governor General at the time uh, that uh, Stephen Harper was was re Premier, pushed back against his desire to prorogue uh, Parliament, but ultimately acquiesced. It was quite a quite an intense uh, moment. Uh, where I am in in British Columbia, we actually had a left hand governor refused to dissolve parliament on the grounds that there had just been uh, an election and the premier didn't like the results and wanted to have a new election the governor general refused so so the role exists to uh um, he as, was as he found to legally government. you know just before you move on from that was he found to legally have a right to do that i mean there's a canadian constitution that's completely independent mm -hmm. of the united kingdom and the monarchy 
Well, that's right. But these are the representatives of the monarch within Canada. Um, so, you know, in, in, in this case, uh, the lieutenant governor, uh, you know, was, 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 was appointed by the prime minister on the advice of, of the provincial uh, premier. And um, there was debate at the time as to whether she could do this, uh, but it was, but constitutional scholars weighed in and, and ultimately it was an important precedent setting moment but i mean these the, the, these are these are are kind of these are very rare instances but i evoke them to to show that 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 our political system our system of governance in fact does um uh, depend on the existence of of, of this institutional uh, framework right so 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 although it's a largely uh, uh, symbolic day-to-day -day job uh, the, the 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 apparatus of governance in this country is built around that new uh, you know, that, that 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 Westminster parliamentary uh, tradition. So what happens now? You right. certainly the popularity of the Queen um, may have put a damper on public debate about the future of the monarchy in Canada. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think now under King Charles, once we get through this very hard 10 days of mourning um, and then the people start looking at King Charles, perhaps not with the same affection as they've had for Queen Elizabeth, uh, that that will fuel further debate about Canada's connection in the Commonwealth and to the monarchy in Britain. Yeah, there's um, certainly polls that that, that indicate that uh, the, the 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 affection for Elizabeth was uh, much uh, stronger than it is for 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 Charles and and so there's two things there's there's Elizabeth the woman who uh, was extraordinarily uh, admired and appreciated by 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 the population uh, and then there's the notion of the monarchy and so a lot of people have indeed raised the question uh, did we did we keep that connection that historical connection to the British crown uh, you know out of a sense of attachment to the queen and and does that attachment to the monarchy outlive uh, our affection for our affection you know the the, the country's affection for uh, for the queen so there's an interesting uh, debate there i think it will take time to uh, to 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 develop uh, these are complicated questions that that don't get sorted out and that obviously surpass the individual. I mean, the crown is the crown, right? right? Whether whether it's Elizabeth or or, or Charles, uh, they 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 are the person in that role, but the role uh, stays the same. So you have to uh, then ask yourself, or the country needs to ask itself, what what do we do? And as I said before, our our governance is structured around. Uh, this this institution, and so if you start to uh, want to sever those ties, then you have to think about what do we replace this uh, with. And, and certainly, what, what would you replace it with as a well, former crime you reporter, <laughs> you know, a former crime reporter who covered the uh, crown attorneys and the crown in in the courts, mm -hmm. and uh, what what do you replace it with? You just call it something yeah, well. You call it, we still need some kind of head of state, and presumably we would maintain our parliamentary system. Uh, we we wouldn't necessarily move to kind of a Republican style of of government that would that's not in our in our political traditions in this country. So you need to replace it with someone, with something, someone. Uh, presumably, you would keep that role of the governor general. The only thing is that that would be. Uh, a, a position that was, uh, you know, existed only within Canada that wasn't kind of a, a representative of the monarchy. We would we would have our own head of state, and a lot of countries around the world have a kind of a, a symbolic head of state, and then a head of head of government, which in our case is, is our is our prime minister in a de facto way that that doesn't exist in the constitution. So the problem, though, and, and this is the important point in all of this, is that, you know, there can there, there can be debate about what it looks like. But in Canada, we have a very difficult uh, relationship with constitutional change. As you know, you referenced the patriation of the constitution 40 years ago. Uh, that was uh, a very divisive moment in, in a lot of ways in, in Canadian history. And it opened uh, the, the, the door to 20 years of, of constitutional uh, drama in this country. You'll recall the, the Meech Lake Accords and the Charlottetown don't, Accords. Please and the don't Charlotte mention Accords. the Meech Lake Accords. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things that nobody wanted to hear about. Because when you start to 
uh, open up the constitution, then suddenly different groups in the country have claims to what uh, they want that new constitution to look like. And because of our federal nature, because of the, the vast territorial expanse and the cultural differences that exist within the country, because of our history with colonialism as well, it's very difficult for Canadians to agree on what a new constitution uh, would look like. And that's why I think, I mean, we have a, a since those- It, you know, it sounds the like of, that's why, we have finish, a head in the to finish sand. your sentence for you, that's why probably the federal government just wants all of this to go away. I, th I, th I think so. I, I don't think any sitting federal government is going to be the one to push this agenda forward. This is, if, if this happens, it's, it's gonna come from, from outside of, uh, uh, of the government because it's a can of worms. It's a, it's a Pandora's box for any government. So what do you think, you know, if we move away from Canada into the broader Commonwealth of those 53 nations, um, some of them are, are having much more intense debate than Canada yeah. is, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like Australia, I think it's fair to say. Do you think that that, that organization, um, maybe splinter is a good word? Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, the thing about the Commonwealth is, is certainly Canada is not the only country having these, these conversations, as you say, Australia, several Caribbean nations as well. Uh, we saw Barbados last year uh, sever their ties with the monarchy. So, so, so in fact, for Canada, there's, there's models for how this can, this, how this can be done. The Commonwealth exists as this kind of voluntary organization. Uh, it, it's, it's not, you know, it's not like the United Nations or anything like that. It's, it's not a... Um, uh, you know, it's not diplomatically. Uh, it, it, it's it's a it's a soft power kind of uh, structure uh, that has. Uh, you know, if you look on their website, they they, they their um, uh, priorities are uh, environmental protection, favoring trade between member states, uh, uh, which, favoring which, the... which coincidentally the the king. Um, has had a, you know a huge environmental push, and maybe that is something yes. that he would try to build on yeah. in the Commonwealth. P presumably, so it exists, and of course, the Commonwealth Games that 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 is sort of maybe the most visible uh, element of, of 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 what this organization does. So it could continue to exist for historical reasons because people are the countries are connected to this organization because of the of the kind of voluntary work that it does, and already it's shifted away. I mean, the Commonwealth was born out of the what was used to be called the British Empire with a very hierarchical relationship the Brit, you know the Britain was on top and then the other commonwealth nations were were sort of subservient to to the crown and then over the 20th century that became a more egalitarian um, 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 organization that was not hierarchical that was no longer even the, it's not even called the British Commonwealth it's just the Commonwealth and uh, and and it exists you know it's for 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 sort of diplomatic reasons and for 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 smaller uh, uh, countries to seek assistance from larger ones and you know spread of democracy and all that so so I think in terms of those those historical connections I don't see the 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 organization falling apart you know the the, the 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 that that connection to the history of empire i think is more and more tenuous especially since the the, the legacy of that colonialism is questioned in so many places around the world professor kenny if i can finish with you kind of where i began and that is how this is playing you know i was anchoring ctv national news a long time ago in the 90s when princess diana died and uh, mm. I think I vastly underestimated the public response mm. uh, around the world. And, and I, I, I'm not sure I've completely defined in my own mind why people rallied to her, but, but certainly there was, there was sympathy for her. Uh, there was a sense of injustice around how her life had played out. Mm -hmm. um, she was the, you know, beautiful princess and, and on and on. But, the queen, I think, is a different situation. And if you had to put your finger on kind of the 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 number one button on why Canadians and 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 Brit and the British, for that matter, identify with the queen, how, how what would you say? I mean, what, what I mean, yeah, she was a great queen. She wasn't very controversial. Was there something more in your mind that that really made that connection? I think sheer longevity. Uh, she, you know, she, she was around for so long in in a stable way. She she sort of 
uh, embodied the sense of being uh, very stoic and above the fray and 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 able to navigate through all the the tumult of 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 of, of world events, but also a scandal within her own uh, in her own family. Uh, but but mostly, you know, through all that, she was she was also she was always there. Uh, most uh, Canadians, just because we're talking about Canada, but, but, but most people who are somehow connected to the to the crown have never known any other monarch, uh, and 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 I think that is extraordinarily uh, powerful. The sense of in a world of change, and 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 we know how uh, you know politicians like to you know capitalize on on change and an uncertainty. She represented. Uh, a lot of stability, and I think that has a lot to do with um, with that affection people have, have had. Yeah, I mean, public school in uh, in Ontario at Kettleby Public School, north of Toronto, we sang "God Save the Queen." Do they still <laughs> sing it in school? I, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't think so. I think very rarely do do schools uh, still sing "God Save the, the Queen," but 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 some might on on you know certain occasions uh, for sure. But yeah, it's something something generations of of Canadians have grown up with. Nicholas Kenny, a professor at Simon Fraser University. Thank you, Professor Kenny. It's really great to talk to you. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure.